Firebase, AI agents, and a host of hackathons. No, this is not a new sci-fi film, it's Google Developer News. Welcome to November's edition, I'm Anish Chavla. Fun fact, Die Hard 4 was the movie that made me fall in love with the dev and coding world. What was yours? Would you need to go back in time to remember? Or maybe even to the future? For now, let's talk all things developer. Firebase Demo Day took place earlier this month, and this one was red hot. The event was a virtual experience focusing on integrating the new AI features that were launched at Google I.O. into existing applications. It guided developers through three key phases, prototyping, implementation, and operations. This year, we got an inside look at how an app development team added AI to their existing live application. Follow along as the team took on the challenge of finding the right AI use cases to wow their users. See how they discover the right developer tools and watch them write the code to bring those use cases to life. Check out this exciting video series now at firebase.google.com. Now, a big shout out to Open Health Stack Team. These folks are shaping the future of digital health by giving developers tools to create secure, offline capable healthcare apps, especially for low resource areas. At its core is the Android Fire SDK, an open standard for seamless data sharing in healthcare. With libraries like SDC for data collection and workflow for clinical support, Open Health Stack is revolutionizing everything from creation to care pathways. This month, the team has released a series of how-to videos on our channel highlighting each tool and its role in digital health. If healthcare tech is your field, check out the Open Health Stack series now. There are so many uses for tech in our world. A lot of them are fun, but seeing teams working together to increase the quality of healthcare for people worldwide is pretty special. It's time now to turn up the brightness. Let's check out this month's spotlight. This month, we are following up with a deep dive on setting up Go in IDX. We mentioned this new rollout in IDX last month, so let's take a look on how to get that integration running with our Go expert, Saba. Hello, I'm Nura Saba, Engineering Manager for the Go Tools team at Google. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to build applications with Go in minutes. We'll set up a Go development environment in Project IDX and create your first server applications. Project IDX is a browser-based development environment that includes AI assistance, making it simple to build and deploy full-stack applications. Let's walk through setting up a Google development environment in IDX and creating a Hello World server. There are a few different ways to create workspaces in IDX. You can import a GitHub repository, create a new blank workspace from scratch, or use a pre-configured template. We are going to show you how to start from scratch first, and then we will look at templates. Open idx.google.com in your browser. Click on See All Templates, and then choose the miscellaneous category. Click Blank Workspace. This will create a fresh project. We will name the workspace as Hello World Go and click Create. On Workspace Load, you will see two lines, README and dev.next. The dev.next file configures your development environment. The first line packages dot 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 defines configuration function. Packages gives us access to the next package repository. Let's add Go support by updating it with two key components, the Go package and the Go extension. You will notice there are a number of packages in the packages list that are commented out. Let's uncomment Go and delete the others. Under extensions, we will add golang.go. After making these changes, you will notice that a new button appears at the bottom of the window, prompting us to rebuild environment. On every environment configuration change, we will need to rebuild environment in order for the changes to take effect. Click rebuild environment 
and IDX will rebuild our environment with Go support. Now, we are ready to create our first Go application. We'll start by initializing a new Go module. We can do this in two ways, using the command palette or via the terminal. Open the command palette by navigating to View, Command Palette, and then type go initialize go.mod. If you prefer to use the terminal, you can open a new terminal and type go mod init. With that done, we are ready to create some Go code. In the root directory of our project, let's create a new file and call it main.go. Let's start by adding package main. This tells Go we want to create an executable program rather than a library. Now we will import the packages we need. Formed for basic input output, log for logging server activity, HTTP to create our web server, and OS to handle environment variables. In our main function, we will first log that server is starting up. Then we use http.handlefunk to tell our server that any incoming web requests should be handled by our handler function. For the server configuration, we need a port number. We will try to get it from environment variable called port using os.getm. If that's not set, we will default to port 3000, which matches common cloud deployment practices. Now for actually starting the server, http.listen and serve starts listening for web request on our chosen port. We use null because we are using the default HTTP settings. If there is an error starting the server, we will log it and exit. Finally, we define our handler function that processes web request. It takes two parameters, a response writer for sending data back to the browser and a request containing the incoming request details. For now, we will just write a simple HTML document containing hello world. That should be good for main.go. But to see our server in action, we need to set up a preview in IDX. IDX preview lets us test our server without leaving the development environment. This makes it easy to iterate quickly as we build our application. Let's update our dev.next file one more time to add the preview configuration. In our web preview configuration, we set the command that IDX should run. In this case, we want it to execute go run main.go to start our server. We specify the manager as web since we are running a web server. Under the environment section, we will set up any environment variables our server needs. Remember that port variable we looked for in our Go code? Here's where we will tell IDX to provide it. We set port, which lets IDX handle port allocation automatically. After we save these changes, IDX will rebuild the environment, and we will be able to see our Go server running right in the preview window. After IDX rebuilds the environment, the preview should open automatically. If it doesn't, we can open the preview from the command palette by selecting Project IDX Show Web Preview. Now we can see our Hello World message in the preview window. Great! This gives us a working Go development environment in IDX. Now that we understand the basics, let's look at how templates can speed up development. Click on the Project IDX tab and then Home to navigate back to the IDX homepage. From here, we can click See All Templates. Clicking on Backend, we can see that there is an existing Gemini API Go Backend option we can use. Or by clicking on Gemini API, we can then choose Go Web App to initialize a new template. And there you have it. You have now created a complete Go development environment, built a working web server, and learned how to use the IDX preview feature. From here, we can explore templates to build more complex applications with Gemini. All we need is a Gemini API key, and we are ready to turn our ideas into real applications that scale. Thank you. Where do developers go to have fun and meet other devs? They go to their local DevFest. Let's see what happened on the grounds at DevFest Silicon Valley.
Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Just got back from experiencing DevFest firsthand here in the Bay Area, and let me tell you, it was buzzing. I spent two days immersed in all things tech. First up was the DevFest Silicon Valley's Responsible AI Day, where the focus was on building ethical and inclusive AI. Then the next week, I went to DevFest San Francisco. The energy was electric. Everywhere I looked, local developers, students, presenters were deep in conversation, sharing ideas and learning from each other. I had a blast chatting with folks about their projects, their passions, and what they were taking away from the event. But DevFest is more than just learning. There were plenty of opportunities to meet new people, socialize, and refuel with some tasty snacks. Think of it as a giant tech playground for anyone who loves to code, create, and most importantly, connect. If you're passionate about technology and want to join in on the fun, check out the website for a local DevFest event near you and mark your calendars. Trust me, you will not want to miss it. Don't let Emmy have all the fun. Be sure to find a DevFest near you because you definitely don't want to miss out. Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm a technical program manager at Google DeepMind, coming at you with even more fun updates, and they're all AI flavored. As we get closer to the end of the year, we're really in the giving mode, and it shows with how many hackathons we're having this month. First off, women tech makers have launched the She Builds AI Hackathon, a six-week virtual event empowering women to create real-world AI solutions. Throughout the campaign, women tech makers will inspire anyone and everyone to build with AI. You discover stories of female AI leaders, the apps they've created, and the results they've been able to achieve. Whether you're building new skills or perfecting your scraps, She Builds AI offers a chance to connect, collaborate, and create. You can help change the landscape of AI by signing up today using the link in the comments. How about winning a share of $65,000? Enter Quorum's built-in AI challenge to build web apps or Chrome extensions with API like Gemini Nano, all directly in the browser, no servers called needed. Top projects will get featured on Google's channels. Sign up on Delve Post, link in the comments, and show us what you can create with Chrome AI. And finally, if that wasn't impactful enough, here's something you can really get into. Google Cloud's AI for Impact Hackathon. This unique event is all about using AI to address some of the biggest social challenge in the APAC region. You will use Google's Gen AI tools like Gemma, Gemini, Vertex AI, and Gemini Code Assist to take on the big issues in healthcare, education, and sustainability, just to name a few. It's a chance for developers to create innovative solutions that could make a real difference. We're excited to see what ideas emerge from this hackathon, so stay tuned for updates on their progress. And to really sweeten the deal, there's prizes for grab for the winners. These are just the tips of the iceberg. For information on all the hackathons that are currently open, visit the link in the description. The future we spoke of is here. The winners of the Gemini API developer competitions have been announced. And we did it again in style with our favorite developer, the legendary Christopher Lloyd. Now to be clear, it's a pretty big deal to win a car, especially one as iconic and unique as a vintage DeLorean with a new electrical motor. But the even bigger deal, the incredible ways that so many of you found to build with Gemini. We couldn't even begin to cover all the amazing ideas and solutions you all came up with, because great Scott, they are amazing. From finding ways to help folks with low vision experience video content, to supercharged travel planning, to making your world more whimsical, we truly saw it all. Check out all the winners at ai.google.delve slash competition to be amazed too. Okay, we're done with our movie references, but we are curious, what is the most unrealistic developer thing you've seen in a show or movie? They always make it seem so easy to hack into the mainframe. Let us know your favorite or most frustrating scenes in the comments below. That's it for November. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to save your code while you work. Nothing worse than losing all the... Hey, where's the rest of the script? You gotta be kidding me.